Welcome to the Center on Innovation and Improvements Indicators and in Action series. The series includes three course modules, instructional planning, classroom management, and instructional delivery. My name is Rachel, and I am your facilitator for this instructional planning module, the first in the Indicators and in Action series. Instructional planning covers 21 indicators organized into four topics building strong instructional teams, aligning instruction, differentiating instruction, and preparing for instructional delivery. These indicators represent what works in teaching and learning. Implemented fully and consistently, student and school performance will improve. Indicators in action will help you implement them fully and consistently with these key features. Video footage of real teachers in real classrooms implementing the indicators. Planning tools and templates specifically designed to support the implementation of the indicators. For maximum learning benefits and to avoid confusion, each part should be viewed in the order it appears on the website module. Building strong instructional teams, aligning instruction, differentiating instruction, and preparing for instructional delivery. We recognize that you may not be able to view all the parts in one sitting, so we've created each part as an individual file accessible on our website. This will provide an easy, convenient way for you to move through the module. An electronic workbook accompanies this module. The workbook provides you with the full list of the indicators and relevant tools, templates, and activities. You will also find additional content to supplement your learning. If you haven't already, please return to our website and take a minute to print the instructional planning workbook now. Once you've done that, you're ready to move on to part one, building strong instructional teams. See you there. Part 1. Building Strong Instructional Teams Exceptional instruction requires exceptional planning, and today, exceptional planning begins in teams, which leads us to our first topic, building strong instructional teams. There are many benefits to instructional teaming. Collegial learning, curricular alignment, replication of best practices, and opportunities to talk about individual student needs. Let's listen to some benefits identified by these teachers and administrators. First, we'll hear from a teacher and a principal who work together in teams. This is my first year um, dealing, doing common planning and I really feel like it's effective because you get to get strategies from other teachers. I've, you may get used to teaching something a certain way and somebody brings up another activity or another way to represent it and it really provides me with feedback on what I'm doing in the classroom. Also it helps with um, planning instruction because if I have a weakness my students have in one area, I can say, look guys, my kids aren't really getting this. It, how is your class doing? And if they're, they're, oh my kids got it because I did this, 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 and this. It makes me a better teacher, it makes the team stronger, and it makes the students better because they're getting multiple representations of the same concepts because not everybody teaches everything the same way. When our teachers participate in collaborative planning, they have an opportunity to review the performance of our students, actually examine data trends, notice where our students are strong in addition to areas where our students have additional areas for growth. In doing so, we actually take time to go back, look at the assessment question by question. Perhaps there's a question where we have one teacher who performed extremely well yet we have another teacher who didn't have that same type of showing. Now we know with the collaborative planning piece that we should see commonality in terms of what has actually gone across within the classroom. However, we also recognize that there are stylistic differences that teachers have in imparting uh, the concept to the kids. And it's those type of stylistic differences that we talk about during those planning sessions and get at the heart of, okay, well perhaps, you know, this teacher actually took more time with the equivalency tape component. And this is why we see the kids are stronger on the strand of number uh, sense. Excellent. 
whereas perhaps we had another teacher who was more focused in on another aspect. Those are the types of things that, that we find to be the beauty of the collaborative planning uh, time that we have set up within our schedule. Both the teacher and the principal find that teaming improves their school's instruction and ultimately leads to high student achievement. The following teachers, an elementary, junior high, and a high school teacher, share their beliefs in the benefits of instructional teaming. Ocean View is very unique because we have data and it's so important in the school. When you come into the school, you aren't very sure as to how important it's going to be and how to go about doing it. And once you understand it and you work and it works well for you, it is the most important concept because it will drive your instruction. And when you see at the end of the year when 100% of your kids have passed the math assessment, you look back and you say those are from the data meetings. Well, we get together as an algebra teacher. We all get together and we talk about which objectives we're going to cover and we come up with our essential questions, the objectives, the um, strands that we're going to go through, and we share activities. Um, it's really good because some, when we have new teachers, we have a new teacher this year, so a lot of the activities she does not have, but being in with us, we can share our activities with her and show her how they're used to help her build an activity bank of her own. Um, it's good because we don't have to, I don't have to write a lesson plan every single day we to alternate and take turns using the plan because we use the same plan. So it makes the job easier and it's just a sharing. We're very fortunate here at Mount Vernon mm -hmm. because our um, administration has granted the entire science department a, a period designated strictly for you know teams. So every science teacher in the building has fifth period or fifth block off so we all get to meet and we meet not only as a department, entire science department, we also meet as strictly just a chemistry team. And that's really where our nitty gritty planning comes together as a team, is in that, you know, at least once a week getting together and planning as a team. In just those short clips, we heard what a difference teaming has made to their instructional practice. In your workbook, we've provided a list of indicators that are present in high functioning teams. Review this list and become familiar with it. Use it to reflect on your experiences working on teams. After you are comfortable with the list, view the next clip of a team engaged in real life work. Use the list to track your observations and make notes about similarities and differences between what you see on screen and what you have experienced in real life. So the outcome for today is to talk about geometry and think about lessons that we're going to teach and share some ideas. Amy, thanks for merging the data together for pre-assessment. So let's take two seconds to look at the pre-assessment. Um, think about strands that they're already strong in and then think about strands that we really need to push hard on. It looks like they came in, either we did a really good job with a calendar map or they came in with really strong background in Identifying parallel, intersecting, and perpendicular mm -hmm. with yes. these in the pairs. Right. right. And same thing with the um, when they use the AB line segment. That for the most part they're not I bad see. there either. Mine are. Huh? No, the first one. Yeah, but it cancels mm -hmm. itself out with the next two. Mm -hmm. yeah. True, but presented in that format. So maybe we we'll look at the format. Presented in that format, they did well. Which is something that we talked about when we were making the assessment because we were talking about, because it's the ruler question is mm -hmm. the one they had the mm -hmm. trouble with. And number one was the more concrete, so we were talking about that in the pre-assessment, how looking at it as the rulers, and then I think later on there's that pipe, pipe question. And you need to get the pipe right. So it's that looking at it in a different format. I, I, didn't bring I see part of that as a language issue too because I think I underlined some of the words that my kids did poorly on several of the things that I, I think are just geometry language um, parallelogram, pentagon, parallel, perpendicular, the polygon, ray they just kind of bailed on those ones and they were pretty cut and dry what, which one is a polygon so I think that the language caught them up as well Congruent, I know. I had several questions about the word mm -hmm. congruent. Um, I don't know that they didn't see that in third grade, but they, or they just don't remember. Um, by New my language. whole class, same thing. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. a term that was unfamiliar. 
Well, the vocabulary has always been a problem for our kids anyway. Right. But I think the area that I had had trouble with for my kids were um, they knew what line segments were, but when they put them together to make a shape, that's where they lost the concept of what line segments were. Mm -hmm. So I think that once we start putting all of those pieces together, it's going to make it a little bit more clear that, hey, this shape is made up of. So knowing that vocabulary is going to be a problem, or is a problem, or a weakness, and then thinking about how we're going to go ahead and teach the unit, one of the things we're hoping to do is share some ideas about ways we can either introduce a concept or reinforce a concept. So anyone want to jump out there first? I would love to start. Why don't you go for it? Thanks for letting me start, guys. I went last last time. <laughs> <laughs> so when it came to my turn last time, I was like, well, <laughs> everybody already said everything. Um, I think to hit the what we were just talking about at the vocabulary, Tia gave these to us, I think, two years ago or last year. Yeah. She gives them to us every year at the beginning of the year. These are just a few of the geometry words that I'm, I plan on introducing specifically and then putting up on our wall. Um, hopefully that will help out. Just that language up on the wall. Um, Geomi, I believe, I got from Diane two years ago, which I love. It's the We use it with the overhead pieces. I could probably, I don't even know if I could put these into SmartBoard and manipulate them somehow, but it's, it's a bingo game for geometry. And it gets them interacting with the pieces and the diagrams. Can you pass those around? Specifically to get them involved. And they love it because it's game-based. So we'll do that towards the end of our geometry unit. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, something else that you can do for differentiation for the higher kids is that in one of the counter math units, we were talking about a right angle and why it's called a right angle, why not a wrong angle. And we, talk, we were talking about it's 90 degrees and they thought like temperature. So we, then we talked about the multiple meaning words again. But what we had said was that, you know, when you add up all of the angles in particular shapes, they equal a certain amount of degrees. And we, so that was more vocabulary that we brought into it. But giving them like this shape right here, mm -hmm. they can actually try to figure out, well, you know, you can draw a line here, and that's a triangle. We know that triangles are 180 degrees that's altogether. So, so we can kind of split that up and see with the wiki sticks, you know, how many triangles can you get out of that? <clears throat> that's so a great extension. Smart. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I actually see that as being really supportive for some of the kids that struggle as well. Mm -hmm. You know, because if they... If they have an understanding of the degrees in a triangle, and that some, if that background is there, then they can use that for another shape. So I could see how that could apply. That's brilliant. Teaming has really evolved at the school, and over the years I have found that teaming has really brought together really good ideas and has helped me really strengthen what I do in the classroom um, because it's a collaboration of really good, solid um, background that a lot of people bring in different perspectives. So I think to teach in isolation, it, it makes you stagnant. And by teaming, you get really good ideas. And 